What's going on YouTube? Champion Productions coming back at you with another Transformers video review and in today's video we'll be taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series number 35 Leader Class Jetfire. So setting Jetfire off to the side real quick, let's go ahead and take a quick look at his um, packaging. So taking a quick look at the packaging, it is done like all your other um, Studio Series packaging designs and the toy line so far. Um, Takara Tomy Generations. And then we got the Transformers logo right here on the side. Uh, then we got a nice picture of Jetfire right here. Studio Series number 35, Jetfire. And then it states what movie he's from, which in this case is Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. And then it says Hasbro ages 8 and up. Coming to this side, uh, coming around to the side of the packaging, we got a nice CG render of Jetfire. And then this little clear piece where the Autobot insignia would be but I went ahead and I took the backdrop out and it's printed on the backdrop so it's obviously not there but nice CG render of Jetfire and then coming around to the other side of the packaging we got Studio Series number 35 so as you can see Studio Series number 35 then we got a more up close look at Jetfire and then it says leader class down there in the bottom uh, coming around to the uh, bottom of the box it's just copyright and stuff and then coming around to the top Transformers Revenge of the Fallen Coming around to this side. We got a picture of Jetfire in his robot mode and his SR-71 Blackbird mode Big screen inspired scale detailed backdrop uh, Pyramid desert battle and then his SR-71 Blackbird mode is officially licensed by Lockheed Martin if you want to read that you can Make sure it's all in focus There we go he does have a brief bio. Jetfire makes the ultimate sacrifice, heroically giving up his parts to restore and strengthen Optimus Prime, and that is exactly what we see in the movie. Um, 36 steps, and then it shows, uh, it says build the cast, um, sold separately of course, studio series number 34, leader class Megatron from Dark of the Moon, um, backdrop included, as you can see. That's it for the packaging. And of course, he does come with his backdrop, which is the um, Pyramid Desert Battle. As you can see there, got Tank, and then coming around to this side, we got a picture of the Autobot insignia, and then Transformers right here on the side. And then on the display stand itself, it says Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, Transformers Authentic. And then coming to this side, 35 Studio Series, so... That's all there is for the packaging in the display stand. Alright, taking a quick look at his accessories, he does come with his battle axe, which we saw him use this only one time in the movie, but he chopped Mixmaster's clone in half with this. And uh, yeah, this is very, very faithful to what we see in the movie. Uh, nice silver paint here on the side, very nicely molded and detailed. Um, yeah, cool little weapon. Yeah, I, I like the battle axe. It's very, it's very, it's just a very nice weapon for Jetfire. It suits him. Um, he does come with his walking cane, which is molded very nicely. Uh, one thing I wish they did do was, I, I wish it was just all black. Like, um, just this half black, half gray thing sort of clashes. But, I mean, it, it does look good nonetheless, but... I mean, I just kind of wish they made it either, like, just one solid color. Um, but, I mean, it looks good nonetheless. And I, I really do like it. It's a very nice little accessory. And then the last accessory he comes with is kind of weird. Yeah, this is a uh, more of like a um, chest section, uh, uh, like a chest section for Optimus Prime uh, and that's to go with the new Studio Series Optimus that they released. Now it's not going with this Optimus unfortunately it's going with the newer not the Dark and the Moon one but the uh, I'll post a picture of it because I can't remember what number it is but you're able to swap the chest piece out and put this one in and I really don't know why they included this maybe it's I don't know it's just something I really just don't know. They included it. It's a nice inclusion, and, and you are able to swap it out with the chest piece on the new Optimus Prime, but I really don't know why they included this. And then, of course, he does come with his um, instruction manual. Yep. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, I think they did. Uh, I think they have done a little bit better here with the red and the gray and whatnot, but, you know, just your basic instruction uh, manual. 
Now I will not be able to display my backdrop like I normally would simply because with the packaging and his background I do not have enough space on my review table to show everything off um, and have the normal setup going. So yeah with that out of the way let's go ahead and bring Jetfire back into view and here he is in his SR71 Blackbird mode and I must say this is an impressive um, Blackbird mode if I don't drop it. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a very impressive uh, Blackbird mode and I really do like it. And this figure overall is so much better than the original um, 2009 um, Jetfire figure uh, from Revenge of the Fallen. And it just, I really do like this figure. I, overall, the SR-71 Blackbird is one of my favorite jets um, right next to the F-22 Raptor. And I really do like this jet mode overall. It's got a ton of nice little details on it. And, um, yeah, it looks really, really good. Um, coming in to take a closer look at some of those details, it's got small writings on it, um, which are just too small for the naked eye to read. Um, and this cone section is rubber. And then we do got this yellow dot, which, yes, is accurate to how it was in the movie. Um, but it's just... I really do like that little detail. I don't know why. Um, I feel like some people, in my opinion, it looks it sort of just it helps with the accuracy. Some people probably don't want it there. I'm fine with it personally, but you know, it's just my personal opinion. Uh, coming around to the back of the jet, uh, these little pieces here are softer rubber. Um, just saying. Um, and as you can see, these panel lines on the turbine right here don't want to stay flush all the way. Uh, coming around to the side of the uh, wing here, um, I think this is called the rotor, but on the rotor here, uh, it's got 17872, and it's got a little skunk em emblem right there, and then some nice red paint on the back of the jet. Um, some nice molded in detail on the inside of the jet engines. Um, yeah. And then on this side, I think on this side of the turbine, I don't know why, but just this does not want to stay as flush as this one. I, I can't figure out why, but yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't. It doesn't bother me all that much. Um, but yeah, you can store his accessories in jet mode, which I'll show you real quick. So first we'll start off with the battle axe. Now the battle axe has two pegs right here and right here. And if we turn jet fire over onto the back, onto his back stay up please there is a peg hole right bring that a little bit closer in right here and right here and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the pegs and just line them up with those peg holes and then that should just all snap into place and then that'll just stay on just like so and as you can see this is not the cleanest of transformers uh transform this is not the cleanest or most aerodynamic transformer you will ever see in terms of jet mode but yet again he's doing a lot for one figure and i'm, I'm really willing to forgive the kibble on the under, underside because if you i mean come on how many people are going to look at their figure like this or how many figure or how many people are going to display their figure like this if you do yeah i just don't know what to say because most people will be looking at the figure like this, and it doesn't look too bad like that. I mean, yes, you can't see the robot feet and the head right there, but, you know, yeah, you, not much you can do about it. Now, for his walking cane, you can turn this into a front landing gear. What you're going to do is there's a hinge here and a hinge here. We're just going to collapse this hinge and collapse it just like so. And then there's a peg hole right there, which will peg in to this section or this peg right there. So we're just going to push that in and then it will sort of just line itself up and then there are two other landing gear um, landing gear pieces which are right here and right here which will just fold out just like so and then we sort of get like a official uh, landing gear set which is very nice um, I really do like how they incorporated that and it's very impressive so bringing in some size comparisons let's bring in uh, uh, Studio Series number 5, Voyager Class Optimus Prime, and as you can see, um, do I even need to say anything here? This is way out of scale, and you know, they more they scale better in robot mode, so I'm, I'm just not even going to comment on that. Uh, there, there's your size comparison between, size comparison between him and Optimus. 
And then we got Studio Series Ratchet, which again, I think this is even worse than how Optimus scaled with uh, Jetfire because again, completely out of proportion. Um, yeah, just just completely out of proportion. So now you can fold up the landing gear and everything. This front this front uh, landing gear piece folds up just like so, and then these back ones obviously just fold up into the um, underside. And you know, I really like how they are able to store all the accessories in vehicle mode, except for this. If you don't have the new Optimus figure, I just put this in a Ziploc bag until you get your hands on them, and um, yeah. So for the transformation, what we're gonna do is start by taking all of his accessories off. The landing gear will just come off, the front landing gear anyway will come off, and we'll go ahead and put it back into cane mode, walking cane mode, and then we come around to the underside of the jet here, and we are going to take his battle axe and then just unplug that. Then we'll take these rubber, these little sections here are rubber. We're just gonna take these and unpeg them and they'll sort of just fall off to the side. And this is for um, the new uh, compatibility between this figure and the new Optimus figure, which I'll go over that a little bit more in robot mode. Then what we're gonna do is take the arm sections here and just untap them. They'll, they'll just tab in and then coming around to these turbine sections here and then we're just going to unpeg these just a little um, they just tab in which tab in very securely and then once you untab those um, leave them like that and then we take this whole section here and just break it in half just like <laughs> just like so and this is just to let you guys know this is going to get quite fiddly um, then what we'll do from there is we'll take where do I we'll take these sections up here and just like so open those up and then this whole section here will hinge just like so and then we can bring these sections right here down and then bring the turbines with it and then we can tab this section into place and that will become his crotch then what we'll do from there is take the feet and untab them from the side and then that'll allow us to hinge all this out and then his like I guess toe is on the inside of his foot and then we can straighten out his foot bring that down rotate that around and then we rotate or actually we've got to untab this whole section here and we've got to bring it up and it's on a double hinge there's a hinge here and a hinge here and we're just going to slide that up and then bring that section down. And then what we can do from there is move the entire top half of the figure out of the way. Um, we can rotate this inward. Now we can't rotate this around like that because this section will collide into here and it's just not worth doing it like that. And oh gosh, that fire, you hit my camera. Um, yeah, uh, then we can rotate that section around. And one thing that's really cool is that the turbines from jet mode are actually the thighs in robot mode, which is a very nice detail. And uh, yeah. Just repeat that same process on this side. Again, this is a very fiddly transformation because I'm having to do it in a small review space. And, you know, so just fold out his toe, which is quite difficult to do. There we go. Fold this section down and then rotate this section down. Rotate his thigh, just like so. And then we can situate his legs and sort of a weird chicken leg sort of like position as it's called by many Transformers th uh, Transformer fans. Um, yeah, so just like that. Uh, then what we do from there is we come around to the top half of the figure, just like so. Then what we'll do is take this whole section here and fold that down and then take this whole um, nose cone section and untab that from the head and then take these little uh, side pieces here like I guess whisker pieces and we'll fold those out just a little bit just to sort of complete the aesthetic then this whole <laughs> this whole section here is on a double hinge we're gonna try our best to you've got to fiddle with it make sure there's enough clearance between uh, these two pieces here that um, this whole section can fold down. And once you make sure you have that clearance, we take this whole section here and there's three different hinges and it will collapse in on itself. So we just 
collapse all these sections in. And then we've got to get that proper clearance. So there we go, just like so. And then what we do from there is take these sections here and then we can fold those up and sort of get this, I don't know, like these shoulder pads, the sort, the sort of shoulder pad aesthetic. Then what we do from there is take his arms, untab them from the side, and then move them up. And there's a tab right here and then a tab in there, which will tab into place. And then I'll keep all that secure. Do that same thing on this side and just do that just like so. Then we can take the hands and fold them out on both sides, just like so. And then once we've done that, we can take this section here and slide these panels out. And then this will double hinge and there are two tabs right here, which will tab into right there. So uh, let me show that a little bit better. Um, whoops, two tabs right in there. It's kind of hard to see, but there are two tabs, tab holes, and then we're just gonna tab that into place. Then, for uh, one of the more trickier parts, this whole section here will double hinge. We've got to get these two tabs on the back here. I'm gonna to try to show that off. There are two tabs right here, and then there are two tab holes right here on the cockpit section. We've got to hinge everything into, the, into place. And then once we do that, that should all tab into place. And that will all become his back, just like so. Make sure that locks into place. Then we take his arms, fold them up and out of the way. Then what we do from there, take these rubber sections here. These will tab in to his side. What we do, there's a tab right there and then a tab hole right here. And that will tab right into his side. And that will sort of fill in the, his um, side areas. And then we just tab that into place just like so. Then we fold the arms down. And then fold his head up, sort of get that hunchback look. And then uh, let me do a quick spin a make sure he's all uh, put together right. Um, let me organize his legs down here. Um, for whatever reason, it bugs me. Uh, for whatever reason it bugs me when his legs aren't unison. I don't know why it's just the way I am Don't judge me <laughs> But after all that here we have studio series number 35 at leader class jet fire in his robot mode Behold the eternal glory of jet fire Okay, I couldn't help myself, but this figure honestly is really 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 good and it's so much better than the original uh, 2009 um, leader class Jetfire from Revenge of the Fallen. And it just works. This figure is just so much better in so many different ways than the original. And it really is a nice figure. I I, I just I just like him. I, I, I just do. It's an amazing figure. And I... It, it's a true accomplishment by Hasbro. Um, he can hold his weapons. Um, first, we'll take a look at the walking cane. There is a um, port on the inside of his hand, um, and you can simply tab in that walking cane and then sort of just situate, in his, uh, situate his arms in a fashion that he is balancing himself on the walking cane. <laughs> now, um, you, do have a, you, ha you do have to do a little bit of fiddling with the legs in order for the walking cane to sit on the ground, um, but it is possible. Um, I'll try to fiddle with it um, here at the towards the end. Um, but uh, you can you can get him to hold it and have it sit on the ground, um, and you can hold his battle axe. Um, he's got a hole on his on his hand, and even though he's got his fingers sort of uh, laid out um, or sprawled out in a way, uh, he can still hold it. So that is very nice. Although it does look a little bit awkward. So um, yeah, that, that's just sort of um, you know just. It, it just sort of looks weird, but, you know, it's not all that bad. Um, I kind of do wish Hasbro incorporated a hinge or something like that to make his hand close up. But yet again, uh, it, it's fine. Um, it, it looks it looks good anyway. But, um, yeah, let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of these details. 
and Jetfire does have quite a bit of detail on him. So starting down here at the feet, we got some nice glossy black paint on his feet, but um, we do have this yellow dot, which is a carryover from the SR-71 Blackbird mode, and I gotta be honest, I get what Hasbro was doing, I honestly do, but I think it would've been better if they just left it off and would've looked better, but I really do appreciate what Hasbro's trying to do there, and like I said, it, there's nothing you can really do about it. It is there, I, I really get what they were trying to do, but I think it would've been better if they just left it off, but it is what it is. Anyway, taking a look at the shins, got some nice mechanical detail on the shins, and I do recall seeing in the movie, he had these little like wheel pieces here on his foot, and I really do like that they did that there. Um, he does have some fairly nice um, molded in detail on his heels back there. I mean, nothing special, but again, very nice molded in detail. Um, Coming around to his thighs, these are the actual turbines. As I mentioned earlier, these are the actual turbines, and they they figured out a way to make these his thighs in robot, or the tur make the turbines his thighs in robot mode. And I really really like that detail. That it's just astonishing that they were they managed to incorporate that in the transformation. And I really do credit Hasbro for that. They did a really good job with that. And the silver paint just makes it that much better. And all the details that go onto it, really really nice looking. He does have some silver paint in there on the crotch area um, with some more gear details. Um, lifting his head up, he does have some nice molded in detail on his chest. And then his head is, oh, it's just so beautifully sculpted and painted. And you got his red eyes. Um, and then you got this nice dry brush effect on his beard. Now, it is a rubber material, and so are uh, his whisker things up here. They're both rubberish materials, but I, I really don't care. Um, the silver paint on the face just makes him, and it just, it look, he looks old. The dry brushing effect just makes him look uh, torn and uh, just overall just worn down and old and whatnot. And it really is a nice effect. And then you still got the writings. Even though this is a faux cockpit on his head, you still got the writings from the SR-71 Blackbird mode, which does look amazing. So... It's just very nicely molded um, head sculpt going on here with a lot of nice details on it. Coming around to the arms here, we got some nice um, wire detailing there with some paint. Uh, he does have this mechanical uh, sort of situation going on here with his arms, which, again, more silver paint, and it looks very, very nice. Um, just more mechanical details there. Um, his hands do have some nice yellow paint on it, and then we got the little turbine right there in the middle of his hand. Very nice. Um, it's just very all a nice looking robot mode and he does have this what you could call kibble but in my opinion is accurate to the film uh, you got this little backpack section which if you look on the box he's sort of got that same arrangement going on here um, in my opinion I get what Hasbro was trying to do there and I really do like that detail because um, they kind of left this one whole piece and then that's what I probably consider kibble but they added in the hinge joint so you can sort of spread that out and that is very very nice detail and it's just overall a very nice figure in robot mode um now you can store his battle axe in robot mode um let's use this wing so you fold this wing out right here and you got this tab hole right here you got this tab hole and then there's a tab right trying to show it to you there's a tab right there and you just tab that into place and then you can store his battle axe which mind you isn't perfect storage but it is storage none the it's storage nonetheless now taking the battle axe off let's go ahead and take a quick look at his articulation um he is jam-packed with articulation um, starting at the head, he can look up pretty far, and he can look left to right. Um, not an incredible amount, um, but he can look left to right nonetheless. He's got a swivel in the arm. Uh, it cannot rotate full 360 due to the fact there is a peg right there, which collides with this black piece right here on his shoulder. But you do get a fairly nice range of motion with it, um, just like so. And then you've got a outward swivel at the um, shoulder, so you do get some range of motion there. And then we got a swivel above the elbow, which is nice, um, 360 degree um, rotation. He's got a inward bend at the elbow, which is almost a little bit over 90 degrees, so very nice. Um, then 
taking a look at his hands, um, he's got a hinge here, which I, for whatever reason, you could have his hand inward like that. And it does help whenever you're doing a walking cane pose to make him look like he's balanced himself on his walking cane. But you can swivel, he does have a swivel in the hand, so you can get like a normal um, elbow bend if you wanted to. And that is a very nice detail, so you can definitely get like a normal elbow bend going on. Again, very nice detail. I really do appreciate that Hasbro put that in. It's very nice, but yeah. Coming down to the legs, he's got a ratchet joint in the hip, so he can uh, ratchet um, forward and backwards. He can ratchet pretty far backwards. Um, got a hinge joint in the um, hip, so he can hinge um, outwards pretty far. And then he's got two ratchet joints right here and right here. Um, he can kick forward pretty far, um, and then he does have a swivel in the thigh here for uh, more movement. So swivel in the thigh, almost 360. Um, oh, actually, yeah, it is 360, um, but I, I don't know what you'd use that. I don't know why you would have it go 360. I, I just don't. Um, he's got a ratchet here, ratchet here, so he can kick forward and backwards down here at the leg area. Um, and then there is a swivel right here, so you can get some different, like, aerodynamic poses with him. And, uh, this rubber hose piece just came untapped. And then he does have a swivel at the foot, and then he can pivot forward and backward at the foot. So, he is jammed packed with articulation, and he does break down to combine and make Jetwing Optimus Prime with the new uh, Studio Series Voyager Class Optimus Prime that they made. And to me, that is amazing that they've made this figure to where you can break him down for the new Optimus figure. And if I get my hands on him, I will definitely show that off. Um, but yeah, it really does show how much time and effort Hasbro has put into making this figure. And it really, really is a nice and good looking figure. Now, for size comparisons, let's bring in a Studio Series Deluxe Class Ratchet. And as you can see, these scale, these two scale so much better in their robot modes than they do in vehicle mode. Vehicle mode, Ratchet should not be that big compared to an SR-71 Blackbird. And as I, as I said, this just is a better scale, and I really do like how these two look side by side. Set Ratchet off to the side. Let's bring in Studio Series... Um, Number five, Revenge of the Fallen Optimus Prime, or Voyager Class Optimus Prime. And these two scale, in my opinion, they scale perfectly. I feel like Jetfire should be just that much taller than Optimus, because, you know, him being an SR-71, he should be just a massive character in real life. And I really do like how these two scale side by side. And in my opinion, these two do look very good together. So, set Optimus off to the side. So overall, do I recommend Studio Series Jetfire? Absolutely. I was not originally intending to pick this figure up, but I ended up doing so anyway, and I really don't regret it, and I can't wait to see how this guy looks combined up with the new Studio Series Voyager Class Optimus. This is just overall a very nice and successful figure, and it really is so much better than the original Revenge of the Fallen Leader Class Jetfire figure. And it just... It's just a nice figure, and I do strongly recommend you get them. But guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed. If so, be sure to click like, comment what you think of Jetfire in the comment section below, and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video from my channel. That's all for me. Champion Productions, signing off.